Hello everyone, um, thank you for watching my talk. Um, it's a shame that I'm not able to be there in person uh, this evening, but hopefully this talk will still be useful to you if you're interested in a career in psychology or related fields. So um, my name is Georgina Thompson, I'm an ex-JHM uh, student um, and I'm just going to talk about um, my progress since um, JHN, you know, what sort of jobs I've had, my university experience, what my future career goals are. Um, and if you have any questions at all, I'm really happy to uh, receive any emails. Um, uh, you know, I'll put my personal email at the end of these slides. Um, but if you prefer to um, go through a third party, um, that's absolutely fine as well. So I'm going to start off with um, my time at John Henry. Um, so I uh, started John Henry in sixth form, so not from year seven, I joined in the year 12. Um, and that was in September 2014. Um, I did uh, four A-levels, um, psychology, biology, English literature and language, and drama and theatre studies. Um, and initially, when I joined sixth form, I thought, University would either be English or drama for me. They were my two passions. I loved English and drama, loved reading, loved performing, all of that sort of thing was really what I thought I wanted to do. But then I happened to go to um, the open evening um, for John Henry and I was trying to decide what my fourth subject might be because I wanted to do biology as well. And I happened to talk to the psychology teacher and it sounded really interesting. Uh, so I decided that was going to be my fourth topic, fourth subject. And then over the course of A-levels I fell in love with it. I um, really, really enjoyed the course. I really decided that a career in psychology and mental health was something I was really interested in. So um, I completely sort of switched tracks and um, dropped drama and theatre studies after AS year. And, um, then I uh, decided to apply for degrees in psychology. Um, so I applied to four different universities, including um, Oxford, so my deadline was a little bit earlier than most people's, um, and eventually ended up um, getting my A-level results and a place at Birmingham University, which was actually my first choice. Um, so I was very pleased with that. So I was quite nervous. Um, leaving school and um, I you know I you were at home you know um, you know you know your friends you're you're in your comfort zone you know your routine and what's um, everything is the same as you know you grew up in that area and moving to university was um, quite scary I was moving quite far away Birmingham wasn't exactly around the corner um, and I was nervous about making friends uh, nervous about whether I would be intelligent enough to do a degree in psychology. It's quite sciencey, and I've, you know, as I said, I was more the sort of English and drama side of things. So there was, you know, there was some apprehension there. Um, but what I decided to do when I went to university is take every opportunity possible to really get involved. So obviously, I had my degree in psychology that I was completing. Um, but I decided to jump in with a lot of extracurriculars um, and societies um, to make friends, to um, join in, learn some new things. Um, and I did a, a lot of different societies, especially in my first year of university. Um, so some examples I've got on here are British Sign Language, I did ballroom and Latin dancing. Um, and I also set up with another person from JHN, um, the UOB KISS Society, so we fundraised for KISS. Uh, for a few years while we were there um, and this you know obviously I enjoyed all of these things but it was really useful to develop my CV generally showing that you know I'm getting all these different opportunities I'm becoming a very well-rounded person and um, when I was at university I thought you know I want to try and get some experience working in mental health, you know, volunteering or anything sort of relevant and, and related to see if, you know, that is something that I'd be interested in. So uh, the two main things that I did whilst I was at university was I trained to become a Samaritan. 
so Samaritans are um, people who listen on the phone. It's, it's um, an emotional support service and you can phone them up uh, if you're struggling, if you're not feeling great, um, and talk to someone. So I was trained to support people on the phone with that. Um, I also volunteered with CHOMS, which is um, a child wellbeing service in uh, Silso, which is quite nearby. Um, and I helped with, run their um, workshops with children on managing anxiety, um, shadow psychologists working with children one to one, and really learned a lot about um, mental health services and how they work through volunteering, um, especially over the summers there. And then, you know, I, from this all, all over this time, a career in psychology, you know, working in mental health was really what I wanted to do, but I didn't know really how to get there. I didn't know what the exact job role I wanted was. Um, and so I just went to a lot of career talks at uh, university, um, and one of them was on clinical psychology and becoming a clinical psychologist. And from all the, you know, my experience shadowing clinical psychologists and um, these talks, it really solidified that I wanted to pursue a career in clinical psychology. So I uh, graduated from university and learned lots of skills in, you know, time management, organisation, um, you know, lots of great skills from the degree itself, you know, obviously as well as the knowledge of psychology that you learn, and then all of the stuff from my extracurriculars. So my CV was looking pretty padded at this point. So um, for applying for, uh, to become a clinical psychologist, what you have to do is apply for a doctorate in clinical psychology. So you become a doctor of psychology at the end of the course. So it's a three-year doctoral level course, um, and it's very competitive. Uh, it, I think it's something like a 15% acceptance rate onto all of the courses across the country at the moment. So very tough. And for applying um, to be a clinical psychologist, you um, have a sort of main sort of criteria that they look for. So the first is your um, psychology undergrad degree. Um, so a 2-1 or a first, and I, luckily I got a 2-1, so I was uh, ticked that box with my degree. Um, and then uh, the two other things you need is significant clinical experience, so working in mental health services, preferably with a clinical psychologist supervising you. Um, and then also they like research experience, so showing that you have the skills to conduct research in clinical or mental health settings. So I decided um, to try and get a job uh, in uh, to try and gain some of this clinical experience as my sort of next step. And this, I would say, is uh, the biggest hurdle I faced uh, so far in my career journey. Um, as I've mentioned, psychology and clinical psychology specifically is extremely competitive. And when I was applying for jobs, um, you know, I'd apply for something locally and 50 to 100 other people would apply for that same job. Um, so I was very grateful for my CV being as padded as it was and, you know, and with my experience. I did manage to get some interviews um, to a variety of sort of support worker roles um, and uh, I think one for an education mental health practitioner which was working with children in schools and supporting their mental health, but not necessarily something I was interested in at the time. Um, so as I've said on here, you know, it's really common to not hear back from applications. I think I did about 40 job applications before I got my first job. Um, you know, it's difficult to make your application stand out um, and to make sure your application is unique and tailored to each job you're applying to, so not just copy and pasting the same application form each time. Um, so the kind of things I did was um, an Excel spreadsheet. I kept track of all of my applications, who, where, what, you know, when they said they'd get back to me by and when the interview dates were, if I got one, all that sort of thing. And I did have these kind of stock statements for like, you know, my, my voluntary experience and my uh, time at university. And then I would tweak and tailor these um, to each individual job to, to fit their criteria. 
So there is ways to make things a bit more smooth, but just to say that, you know, it can be tough <laughs> um, initially to get your foot on the ladder. So my first job, when I finally got an offer, um, I was very shocked to get an offer because um, this uh, type of job in psychology is very coveted. It's very, um, you know, it's a massive tick on that uh, criteria for clinical psychology. Um, and it's uh, the role of assistant psychologist. So it's kind of uh, one of those phrases that if you said you could be an assistant psychologist, you know, it's, it's just a lot easier to um, prove that you've had that relevant clinical experience. So I was working in IAPT, which uh, stands for Improving Access to Psychological Therapies. Um, it's a primary care mental health service, which means it deals with um, mostly mild to moderate mental health problems. So uh, anxiety, depression, OCD, those sort of lower level um, mental health difficulties. And the model it mainly uses is uh, CBT or cognitive behavioural therapy to help treat people with these mild um, versions of disorders. So that can either be sort of face-to-face sessions or over the phone or online. Um, but my role was mainly about assessing people when they initially referred themselves or their GP referred them to the service. I would do telephone assessments. Um, and also make referrals to other services that might be more relevant or um, you know, help clinicians make decisions about what type of therapy would be best for the person after I assess them. Um, I also did help to run some groups um, on managing anxiety and low mood. However, halfway through my job, uh, the pandemic hit and so everything went completely remote um, and uh, this didn't affect my job too much. Um, I just uh, would do my telephone assessments from home rather than in the office and uh, you know that can be quite tough because sometimes people can call and you know have your assessment and they can be talking about quite sensitive or difficult topics um, and then not having that support system around um, you know to sort of debrief with your colleagues afterwards um, can be quite tough at times but um, I had a really supportive team and we were really quite close and we would contact each other, phone each other, check in with each other a lot. Um, so I was very um, grateful to be able to continue my job uh, all throughout the pandemic. Um, so I did um, find this job really useful to get my foot in the door to learning about mental health services, um, learning how they work, um, learning about CBT and what that is and how that is health helpful to people learning about this sort of symptomology of different mental health disorders um, but it was a lot about assessments rather than about actual clinical intervention um, and I didn't have direct supervision with a clinical psychologist which is something that they really look for in, um, in uh, the a doctor application. So um, after a year in this job I applied and got my second assistant psychologist job in a CMHT, which stands for Community Mental Health Team. So this is a secondary care service. So uh, primary care is that mild to moderate level of anxiety, depression, things like that. Uh, secondary care is um, more focusing on more severe or long-term mental health problems. So some examples might be bipolar affective disorder, uh, psychosis, emotionally unstable personality disorder, and um, post-traumatic stress disorder as well. So even though this role has uh, the same name, it was a very different uh, job description. So I still did assessments, I still booked and, and helped with assessments with the clinical psychologists I was under, but I did a lot more of that clinical um, intervention work I was looking for. So I co-facilitated um, groups um, on therapies such as um, dialectical behaviour therapy, which is a type of therapy that's um, uh, evidence based for helping people with um, emotionally unstable personality disorder. Um, I also co facilitated a, a group for the people with PTSD um, and also did one to one clinical interventions based on these CBT or DBT models um, for anxiety, depression, um, and emotion regulation as well. I also did um, a lot more sort of clinical admin work and um, sort of managing wait lists and data and um, keeping track of uh, waiting times and uh, 
helping uh, just the running of the psychology team within that service as well. Um, and finally, I, I was very uh, fortunate to help um, sort of run and then recreate, revamp the trauma group um, following patient feedback. Um, and that was really helpful to know how um, service evaluation and improvement works in the NHS, which is something that's really useful, again, for the doctorate. So I was there again for a year um, and I found it a really useful experience, again, just widening my uh, knowledge and scope of mental health services and how they work, um, working with more complex presentations rather than just the sort of mild to moderate uh, mental health difficulties and the variety of therapy models, not just CBT. Um, I also did some work on, uh, like I said, service evaluation and transformation, which is um, sort of these sort of buzzwords that you hear in the NHS, but it's basically just um, how the NHS is trying to improve the mental health service they provide. So that was, uh, I was really uh, grateful to receive those sort of opportunities. So looking at my journey to the doctorate so far, um, I've got my degree, I've got a fair bit of clinical experience now, but the one thing I was lacking in was research experience. So what I decided to do and what I'm doing currently is I've gone back to university, uh, but at UCL instead, and I'm doing a master's degree in clinical mental health sciences. So um, it's a variety of different modules, it's a taught masters, so I do uh, modules to learn more about mental health, uh, different uh, disorders, current research in different mental health areas, but I do also research as well, I have a research project um, and I also do a research placement which is separate to my course, um, but something that the university has helped me um, have access to, which is on um, functional disability in OCD, which has been really interesting so far. So as, uh, as it says here, this is ongoing. I'm due to finish this course next September. Um, and this is really to sort of fill that gap of sort of academic and research experience. So I'm hoping to have a more well-rounded uh, set of experience to apply to the doctorate with. So um, that's where I am so far. Um, I uh, have applied to the doctorate because um, you don't. You have to have the clinical experience, but the research is with experience is more of an add-on and more of a, something they like, but you don't have to have. So I have applied to the doctorate this year, and we will see how that goes. So and see if I uh, get an interview. Um, just to give a little bit more context about clinical psychologists and what they do for anyone who is interested, when you they hear me rambling on talking about mental health work and where I'm going. Um, uh, this is just a slide that explains what clinical psychologists do. I won't read it all out because it's a lot of information on there. Um, but yes, working in mental health services with a wide range of psychological difficulties, can be involved in teaching and research as well. They, people can specialise to work with a specific population or specific disorder, or they can work you know, across community services or in hospitals, in schools, in prisons all over the place um, and work with lots of different types of professionals to help deliver um, mental health support. And obviously I'm focusing very much talking about clinical psychology and being a clinical psychologist because that's what I'm interested in, that's, you know, that's the main route I know about. But there are so many other um, areas that people can work in within mental health or, or ways that people can work in mental health that doesn't have to require getting a doctorate, which I would say is the, perhaps a longer route to working in mental health. So obviously you've got the assistant psychologist, which I've talked about, and you know, plenty of people stay in assistant psychologist roles for longer, I just prefer to sort of chop and change. But there's also um, CBT therapists, people who specialise in the CBT, counsellors, dynamic therapists, mental health nurses, so training in nursing and specialising in mental health, uh, educational psychologists, social workers, psychiatry, you know, th there's so many and they all are so equally important um, to um, having that sort of what they call multidisciplinary team working, which is so important in the NHS, um, so a variety of different perspectives to give an individual the best care. 
So that's my very quick run through of um, my journey from JHN to where I am now. As I said, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. That's my email address there. Questions about um, A levels, question about uh, Birmingham University specifically or UCL, um, questions about um, my job or how. I found out about clinical psychology, how to find out more about clinical psychology. I am a wealth of knowledge, but I've realised I've gone very much over time. So I will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and uh, take care. Stay safe.